Reviewing Exponentials and Logarithms for IBISL Topic 1. So, loss of exponents is not really being much discussed again because this is something that mostly you learn on your MYP or IGCSE program. But the two things that you really need to remember is that if you have a negative base with odd power, then you will get a negative result. And if you have a negative base with an even power, you will get a positive result. So if let's say I have minus 2, I power that with 3, I will get minus 8. But when I power that with 4, I will get 16. So on the, your examination, they are mostly going to use the base 10 and base e, or you call it natural logarithm. Logarithm form is asking about the powers. So basically, the rule for logarithmic is that whatever the result on the right-hand side, like after a number being powered, this argument must be positive. If that's so, you can easily convert the into logarithmic form. So the base a and then to an argument, what powers, how many powers does it take? That's x. So let's say if I have 2 power 3 becomes 8, the logarithmic form in order to get number 3 is log base 2 argument 8 because that's the answer is 3. So for logarithm base 10, you don't really need to write the base. You can just say log b and answers in power. So the basic logarithm rules that you really need to know is that when the base meets the argument, like they are the same, the answer is just immediately the power. And then when a number is being powered to the logarithm of its own base, then the answer is indeed that argument. Same does for the base e or Euler's number. Well, you can write it len, logarithm natural, instead of log e. And then the same rule applies. This is log base e, argument e. So the answer is the power immediately. And then when you have a number with the power of its own logarithm base, the answer is indeed the argument immediately. This is the exam question style for exponential and logarithmic. So you can screenshot this question and I'm going to solve it in 3, 2, 1. First things first, we are going to find the expected population after 10 years. So take a look that the population is increased 15% each year. So as it is in the percentage form, it depends on the previous terms. This is a geometrical problem. So the first unit is 232 and the increasing, which is 15%, you are going to add that with one because it is from the previous one, 100% plus 15%. So it is 1.15. And now you can just use GDC and you will get that the 10 years after that, it is 939 rounded to the nearest unit. The same thing goes with the 20 years. So now you're going to do for you 20. Just recall that you change the power. Instead of 10 times, you do it 20 because it's going to be 20 years. And note that this is quite different. We're not using U1, we're using U0. Like the initial, we set that as U0. So we don't need to subtract any power. Now we can just put that on GDC and we'll get that it's 3797. Now we need to find the number of years when the population reach 15,000. So from the model that we have here, we know that the UN will be 15,000, but we don't know the N. So we can equate that and use numeric solver to solve for that. And we get that N is approximately 29.8 years. So it will take 30 years for the goat's population to reach 15,000. Hope you like this video, feel free to share it and take a look at the playlist for more materials to be covered.